my friend. It's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. Welcome back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. In just a moment, you're going to hear a conversation between myself and one of our Fit Father program members, Dave Brooks. Now, Dave is a 54-year-old father of two girls, happily married, coming on 30 years. And what I find so powerful about Dave's story is not only did he use our Fit Father programs to lose over 50 pounds and pack on muscle in his 50s, is Dave did all of this while being a man with brain damage. Dave was born with damage to the right side of his brain that's affected him his entire life. And as Dave went throughout life, he made it a commitment to himself to defy the odds, to not let the diagnosis of the fact that doctors said he wouldn't be able to do stuff define him. So Dave worked on being as athletic as he could in his teens and, and into college. Yet when Dave hit his 40s, he basically took the entire decade off of taking care of himself. As Dave describes, he has a love for peanut butter M&Ms and and different kinds of sweets, and he'd really just let himself go. What I think is amazing about Dave's story is that he was able to turn things around in his 50s, despite tremendous adversity with both his neurologic conditions and all the, the basically stagnation that he'd allow himself get into throughout his 40s. So this is a conversation that you need to listen to if you need a little kick in the pants, because there are so many excuses we can make in our lives to not do things. And Dave is a guy who had every excuse that he could have taken, but he knows that was not his path. His path was a calling to a higher purpose, a purpose that got him aligned, body, mind, and spirit. And it just so happened that our Fit Father program was the thing he needed to get himself back on track. So listen to Dave's story, soak in the lessons. He shares so much wisdom and a lot of inspiration. I think you're really going to love today's episode with Fit Father, Dave Brooks. All right, Dave, welcome officially to the Fit Father Project podcast, my friend. I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here, Dr. Anthony. Yeah, it's it's truly an honor. And I, I know we're going to share a really incredible story um, because you're a man who's overcome a tremendous amount of adversity, you know, from a young age for sure, but also well into this program. So on that note, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to everyone listening, your name, your age, where you're from, and anything else you'd like to share about your background. And then we'll get into your Fit Father story. Okay. Well, I'm... Uh... David Brooks, I go by Dave. My friends and family call me Dave. Uh, I'm 54. I'll be 55 in September. I live in a suburb of Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Franklin, uh, Tennessee. And uh, I'm a CPA in public accounting by trade. Got a wonderful wife that will celebrate 30-year anniversary next month and two beautiful daughters, one that's 24 and one that'll be 22 soon. And she just graduated from college. So I've got two off my payroll. Nice. That's good. <laughs> Love to hear that. And yeah. um, so talk to me about um, your journey just with your body and improving your health and fitness. Like where does your fit father journey start? Well, you know, I, I grew up, I, I was born with brain damage on the right side. Apparently, uh, I have I had an indention about the size of uh, your finger on the right side of my brain, so it affected the whole left side. And the doctors said, well, he'll probably never be able to run, certainly not play any sports, uh, things like that. But I, my mom and dad encouraged me uh, never held me back on anything, uh, but it was a struggle that the left side drags quite a bit and mm-hmm. is very uh, limited in what it can do. And so, you know, I played baseball and basketball, uh, played basketball in high school, ran cross country nice. and stayed active uh, even through college. I, I was never a great athlete, but I enjoyed being outside and playing sports and doing things like that. Uh, and then, you know, we get to uh, the age of 40 and my daughters got involved in activities. And I, I just feel like I kind of lost my way. You know, I with the brain damage, I always had something to prove. I, I had a chip on my shoulder and, and that kind of drove me to go beyond what people thought that I could do, uh, mm-hmm. even though I got made fun of because I ran funny. I can remember going in the backyard and just working on my form because this left arm would drag. Mm-hmm. It would just kind of hang. Uh, 
you know, and, and so uh, I worked, you know, through that, but that motivated me and I just kind of lost my way, I guess, and, and had the mentality of all or nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was used to working out some, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was active. Uh, but, you know, those workouts would be an hour, hour and a half or so. And once uh, life started to get in the way, uh, my diet was awful. Uh, peanut butter M&Ms were, are still my kryptonite. Thank, <laughs> thankfully, they're not around anymore. No telling how many of those I would eat in a day and fast food all the time. And I was always really skinny, kind of a skinny fat, I guess. Uh, I never really had a lot of muscle tone growing up, uh, but uh, just ate a lot of sugar and, and things like that. I, You know, you may be too young to remember all the Kool-Aid craze, but yeah. you put basically a cup of sugar in with some coloring, and that's what I would drink all year long, uh, along with sugary treats and, and things like that. So, you know, my diet was always bad, even when I was active, but then hit 40 and quit moving and doing things like that. Uh, job was stressful. And so I pretty much took a, a decade off of any real activity uh, exercise wise and just continued to get worse with eating and my sleep was not good. And I got up to 221 pounds um, at my at, at, at my highest. I didn't weigh very often because I didn't want to see what it was, but that was the highest number that I saw. And really what the turning point was, we moved my younger daughter that just graduated from college her freshman year, 20, this was uh, in 2018, in the uh, August of 2018, we were moving her into her dorm. Elevators were packed, so she was on the third floor. I said, well, we'll just move her stuff up the back stairwell because that was close to her room. And after about two times up the steps, I was completely gassed. And to a point of, I just, I had to sit down and I thought to myself, this is really pathetic that I have let myself get to this point. And uh, my older daughter uh, played college volleyball. She's division one volleyball player. So we traveled and watched her some. So even though this epiphany hit me in August of 2018, I didn't really get started on doing anything about it until closer to October of 2018. And uh, my wife wanted to lose some weight. She found the keto diet. So we started that together. And I, you know, that's, that's kind of it, it really the, the trigger of knowing that I needed to do something was that day in August when uh, going up a couple of flights of stairs yeah. just did me in. When before, I could, I could do a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean that must have been a pretty humbling experience for sure. And so, yeah, it was embarrassing. It was <laughs> humbling. I mean, every negative feeling uh, that there was uh, was there. Yeah. So you start the keto diet with your wife. Take me through what happens there. You start to lose some weight, I imagine. Yeah. Well, so along the way, I. I knew that I needed to change what I eat. I just didn't know how to go about doing that. Well, I was, I did a search, uh, fit over 50, uh, lose fat, add muscle. Of course, that only led to a million different hits, Mm -hmm. uh, on the internet search. And so I I came across the fit father project I see you, and I'm thinking, oh, well, here's this Hollywood-looking guy. He calls himself a doctor. You know, what's he going to be selling? But Mm -hmm. when I started watching your videos, it was just something that was very authentic about the way that you presented yourself, uh, the information you provided. And really, I I cheated uh, for the first several months because I just used some of the workout videos that you put out there 
some of the circuits and, and some things like that. And so uh, I lost about 40 pounds from <laughs> nice October to it was probably February or so. And then I hit a wall. I got to 181 and I was still needing to lose some weight. And I said, okay, I mean, I'm a tight wad uh, by nature. Uh, but I said, I told my wife, I said, well, this was March. I, I stagnated for a month. I said, keto's not working. I got to do something else. And this uh, Dr. Anthony guy seems like he cares about people. So I think I need to buy the program. And so I did. And, you know, it just opened my eyes to so many things because it's a lot more than just a workout program and a yeah. nutrition program. I mean, the, you know, you, you talk about the, the mental part and all the things that go into that. One of the things that I didn't want to do was to write the mission statement. I'm like, man, this is corny. But once I tied that to, I got my why back yeah. because my father-in-law uh, died, um, I guess he died in 2019, um, but he had dementia and Alzheimer's uh, and he had a stressful job. He didn't take care of himself. And with my brain damage, I'm predisposed to having these kind of brain issues. And I'm thinking, I saw my wife. She's one of the strongest people I know. And, and she traveled an hour and a half each way to visit with him at least once a week to feed him at the nursing home. But it took a, a, an emotional toll, a physical toll, and a mental toll on her. And I... When I was writing the mission statement, I told that part of it is I do not want my wife or my daughters to have to take care of me because I didn't take care of myself. Now, if it happens and I'm doing all of these crazy things, people think I'm crazy the way I eat and what I do and go to bed early and all these things. But if I still get it and I've made these changes, then so be it. But at yeah. least I didn't do it to myself. And then ultimately, put my family through that. And that drives me, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, when I, even, you know, when I fail or I don't want to do something, I think about that. Mm -hmm. And and that's, I, I kind of got my why back. So I got my way back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you called it when you, you mentioned the word before you wrote it down, actually higher purpose. It's like a path of higher purpose. And, um, and I, it, that's really powerful that you did discover that and that it was able to drive you. Talk to me through the, the early setup of the program as you're changing diet plans yeah. from something yeah. like keto to the fit father way of eating. What's that like? Well, I love the shakes, uh, and variations of, of all of those uh, early adopter of that still <laughs> nice. have one uh, every morning. Um, so, yeah, I started with the Apex 10 and, you know, with my limitations, uh, I can remember you. I was at Planet Fitness. That's where I would work yeah. out. So I was doing the Apex 10 and I tried to do the Renegade Rose <laughs> on and, and you said the kettlebells would be tricky, so I even did it just with dumbbells. Yeah. And I think I was using five pounds. I couldn't even do that. And so when I, uh, you you know that you're, uh, if you face plant in the gym like I did, you know that you're old when people make sure you're okay instead of laughing at you. For sure. <laughs> So here's this old guy, he face plants. And so I couldn't even do renegade rows just with no weights at the time. And so just like a lot of other guys, you just keep taking the next step, just try to get a little bit better. And so I was able to get through that. And then I got to uh, the uh, phase two, month one. Um, of course, those um, reverse uh, lunges, the backwards lunges, the back were, lunges were yeah. a challenge for me. Uh, never really mastered those, but again, you know, you can make uh, adaptations to to things like that. But uh, you know, I lost from March once I started your program. 
Uh, from March until mid-May, I lost about another 20 pounds. I got down to 160. Nice. And people were commenting, uh, not, and some, a lot of it wasn't good. They were like, are, they, were at, they would ask my wife, is he sick? Does he have cancer? Is, it, is something wrong? And uh, she said, no, he's, he's just eating right and sleeping and, and exercising. And so I told myself, well, I think it's time to add some muscle. So I, I, I got through the first month of phase two, and then I changed over to old school muscle one. Nice. And uh, made some progress there, put on about 10 pounds. I didn't quite finish the program. I started because of my lack of mobility. Mm-hmm. I was increasing weights and, and I could, my muscles could handle it, but the lack of mobility, yeah. shoulder impingements, I have hip issues. I've got scoliosis because I've got one leg that's half an inch shorter mm. than the other from yeah. the brain damage. Yeah. So, I, it, you know, the next couple of years were really just kind of a series of getting through injuries. And uh, of all places, I, I met a physical therapist at a, a CrossFit gym. My wife wanted to try CrossFit. I like, I don't know if I want to try that or not, but I went with her. And so there was a uh, doctor of physical therapy there that uh, he uh, said, well, why don't you just come see me and You know, I started to see him late in 2019, and he started to make, uh, help me make improvements with my mobility. And he and I go, I still go see him, and I'll continue to go see him because he keeps adding to things that I can do to help with my mobility. And so, from 2019, you know, COVID hit in 2020, it kind of limited me some, but I was still working through some some issues with, uh, you know, I would get the upper body healed and then the lower body would be hurting. So I would, you know, if the lower body was okay, I would do upper body stuff. If the upper body was injured, I would do lower body stuff. Well, I finally uh, had a PRP shot in my left shoulder. The impingement just got to be too much. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much had to take from April of 21 uh, through September of 21, there really wasn't a lot of weight training during that time. I was doing some band work and some PT things, but it gave me some time to really focus on my mobility and stretching and yoga type poses to work on my mobility so that when I got cleared and um, I started, I finally, I got started back on old school muscle one uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving in 2021, and I finally got through it nice. uh, at the end of January. And um, you know, I, I made some some gains. I mean, I it, during the time when I wasn't working out, I had gotten up to the heaviest at 175. I kept the meal plan and the sleep and doing what I could. And this is this is one thing, one valuable thing that I learned. I was an all or nothing kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And you've said it many times on videos that you put out there. Doing something's better than nothing, and so I had to learn the hard way that that's how you uh, go through that. You know, if you've got something injured, do try to do something. Unless the doctor just tells you you you're on bed rest, go for a walk. Uh, you know, do something if your upper body's injured work on some of your lower body things. I, and so this kind of what I did kind of piecemeal for a little while. Uh, so, you know, that I was excited about that. Uh, and then I started old school muscle too in February of 22, but I didn't have enough time mm-hmm. because of the length of the workout. So I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to change. I, I had a DEXA scan in February and my body fat percentage was 16.9%. Mm-hmm. The left side seems to show a little more fat just because it, it because of the lack of mobility. Yeah. Um, but with uh, needing shorter workouts, I kind of changed back to more circuit, but I didn't want to lose the muscle. So Cat and Ben kind of helped me put together uh, a makeshift plan to 
uh, do that. And nice. so from February, I mean, the veins popping out, <laughs> I mean, that just started since February because now I'm down to one, I weighed 156, probably would have been 155, but I kind of fell off the rails last night with eating too many <laughs> mixed nuts last night. But that's part of the process. Yeah. You just get back up and keep moving forward. But yeah, so 156 uh, today. So I've lost about 55 pounds from my crest. Yeah, no kidding. And 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 what I find really powerful is that Every time you ran into some kind of setback, you were able to make a pivot instead of just fall off track and throw everything in the wayside. Do you think that's something that you learned just from your life experience of having to go through so much adversity? Or is this something that this program really highlighted for you? I think it's uh, it's a little of both. I think that this program helped me kind of add to my why mm-hmm. because I still have and, and I have it written down where the doctors said, oh, well, he'll never be able to run. He'll never be able to ride a bike. He'll never play sports. Uh, and, and so I have that written down. And below that, uh, I said, well, they didn't, they couldn't measure the heart. Yeah. And, and, and so I wouldn't change a thing. I, 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 I think that that helps drive me, but you know, I lost that. But this other part, this dementia, the, the thought of me being predisposed to having dementia and Alzheimer's really keeps me ultra focused because I don't want to be a burden on my family. And so mm-hmm. I think that, in addition to the chip on my shoulder that I had from a very early age, really helped keep me on track and just focus on doing the things that, that I can do. You, you focus on the things you control. You can, you control your attitude, your effort, and your action. Those yeah. are the only things we control. The results mm-hmm. there, it's going to be what it is. You know, mm-hmm. people upset. Oh, well, I've ate every, I did everything the way that was laid out in the program and I'm up two pounds this week. It is what it is. You, you just, you can't control the results, but you can control your attitude, your effort, and your action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really well said. And I imagine in your journey, there was that exact experience. Some weeks where the weight didn't move like it did other weeks, and you just kept on keeping on, right? Yeah, yeah, I really, I mean, it, I don't know whether to be upset or to be happy, but you know, I told you peanut butter M and M's were uh, my kryptonite. Well, cookie cake uh, is too. Uh, but I had some uh, a year or so ago, and it just didn't taste good. And I told mm-hmm. my wife, I said, I don't know whether to be happy about that <laughs> or to be upset about that. Yeah. But you know, I just I don't really. Uh, I, I I like, uh, you know, there's so many good, healthy options and I continue to learn. I mean, I think that's part of this process too, For sure. is that, you know, we, we go through this and, and you, it, to, to stay young, I think you got to continue to, to be a, a learner, to uh, continue to uh try new things. And that's one good thing about the Fit Father Project is you change the workouts uh, ever so often. Mm -hmm. And even in old school muscle, you know, whether it's one or two, every four weeks, you're changing the exercises. And I think that, you know, that it forces you to uh, get a little bit better. That's one of the things that I want to do with some of my strength training this next session is to focus on uh, single limb movements nice. to focus on getting this left side stronger. Uh, mm-hmm. And now that I've got better balance, I think I can do that. Yeah, I may fall flat on my face uh, trying to do it, but it's going to make me better. And I think that uh, that's what we've got to continue uh, to do as we go through this uh, process. 
Yeah. And you're very right. The fact that this becomes a learning journey in its own right activates a whole bunch of passion and, and growth. Like many people, as we get older, we stop growing in the same way. And this, the, these bodies give us a really beautiful chance to grow and to learn. And that's very been clear from your journey. Now, I have a question. What have your, what have your daughters said throughout this process that they've seen you go through this journey? I, I'm just thinking back to you not being able to get up those back stairwell, moving your daughter into college. And now they've seen you and you're, you're like lean, ripped, bicep veins and so committed to this. What have they said about this? What are they saying about dad? Yeah, they, um, you know, I, it, they're pretty impressed. I, I think that it's it's been a good lesson for them that you can always come back. I mean, I think that sometimes, you know, it's easy to just give up. And mm-hmm. and I think it's important uh, that, you know, I, I made some changes and uh, still not perfect. Uh, but, you know, they're they're impressed. Uh, my older daughter, I, I'll send her a Snapchat after I'm done with, uh, that's how she communicates. Um, I'll send her a Snapchat after I'm done with, one of my workouts, uh, and, you know, she will comment on it, wowza, or, you know, some kind of something like that. Uh, and then um, kind of a, a an NSV um, on, there was a time when my younger daughter uh, had taken, we had gone to see her, we had lunch with her, and she took a selfie, uh, she and of uh, she and me, and uh, she posted it on Instagram or something like that. And one of her friends commented on it, and I don't know what she said, but uh, Kara, my younger daughter, uh, contacted this young lady and said, "That's my dad." <laughs> so I don't know what she, I don't know what she said, but. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's it's nice to to get feedback yeah. uh, like that, and hopefully be uh, an example of of you know even if you fall off track. And and I've told both of them, you guys are in good shape now. Don't take a decade off like that. Your dear old dad did, and because it was hard getting back. I mean, I oh, yeah. can remember first going back over to Planet. Uh, Planet Fitness is where I was working out. Uh, for the first week, I just just to create the habit, I would just go over there and spend five minutes and maybe get on the elliptical machine just to create the habit because I was so out of shape. I really couldn't do a whole lot. And you just had to, you know, it, it took a while to build up to to really do much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to I want to shift gears a little bit, and I'm, I'm curious. In your experience, how has the the changes through this program, the physical changes, the mental changes, how have they affected like the spiritual dimension of your life? Um, you know, and if that is the case, I, absolutely. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I I love about this whole community the the Facebook group. I mean, I continue to learn things from all those guys, um, but you know, your whole mantra, you still put information out there. You, you're tying the whole body, mind, spirit. We've got this triangle, mm-hmm. body, mind, spirit. And mm-hmm. they all, there needs to be a level of congruency there to really be effective. Yeah. And, you know, getting my health in order has really uh, allowed me to kind of step out of my comfort zone and, uh, you know, for instance, we've got a program at church. Once COVID opens up, uh, the, some of the, uh, there's a local jail. Uh, we're going to take uh, communion uh, out there to the inmates. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's given me uh, more confidence to uh, step out of my comfort zone and do things like that because we're we're here to serve we're here w- whether you're a leader or not we should be servant leaders and and you know for that time that I took off I, I just did what was comfortable fast food stay up late 
didn't exercise, too much TV, too much screen time, all these things. It was easy. I took the easy way out and I didn't challenge myself. I didn't get out of my comfort zone because I didn't have the confidence. I had gained weight and was really kind of embarrassed, but I didn't want to admit it. Nobody really knew because I, I would wear bigger shirts and things like that. People had no idea that I had lost, you know, 50, 60 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you said about congruency is so true. I mean, when we're aligned, I think when the body gets healthy, we can get that feeling of alignment back, which the spiritual, the mental, the physical all together, you know, you kind of feel like you you really are alive and then you can serve more deeply. That's that's definitely the truth of my experience. Now, I want to ask you, for for guys who are a little bit where you are at, maybe they're stuck in that 10-year rut, they're trying to get started, maybe they've tried and they kind of had a little bit of a false start and they had to restart, what kind of advice do you have for men in the early phase of a transformation? Well, one thing is if you fall down, just get back up. I mean, if as long as you keep getting up and moving forward, It's never a linear process. I doubt there's any of the guys that have been very successful in this program where it just is a straight line. It's ups and downs, and you've got life events, and you've got certain things that come up. And I think that you can't just stay down. You've got to get back up, dust yourself off, and keep uh, moving forward and, and just the secret, and you never overpromise anything. There, there is the, the secret is uh, the consistency, and the consistency takes time. But if you can do that, then uh, you know you will see results and continue to learn things that will help you along the path. And you know, it's uh, like I said, don't adopt the all or nothing approach. You start where you are. If you mm-hmm. can't do a renegade row, that's okay. Do a modification, do something. Um, and and then just try to get a little bit better. I mean, I, I think sometimes I would uh, falter by trying to be perfect in it instead of focusing on the pro, uh, the um, progress. And, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, I've, I've learned to just appreciate, uh, progress and some days the workouts just not there. Maybe the sleep wasn't as good, or maybe, you know, uh, whatever situation is, uh, but you just get through it and live to, uh, do better, uh, the next day and, and see what happens. And I think that a lot of times we, when these obstacles get in the way, I think we got to look at obstacles like they're opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and and even sometimes obstacles can turn into tragedy or problems. I mean, look at your situation. Look what you've done. You an obstacle, a, a tragedy. You lost your dad when you were nine years old, and now look at the tens or hundreds of thousands of guys like me that you have helped keep their daughters from having to take care of them yeah. out of a, out of a tragedy. So, you know, this, uh, this awful thing you turned into a positive. We all have these stories and we can, you know, everybody loves a comeback story Yeah, and we can all have our own comeback story. Uh, but those comeback stories are never easy, uh, but you just uh, keep fighting the fight and um, have a good support group. And mm-hmm. and that's what the Fit Father Project provides uh, from so many angles, from the community itself, uh, from the people uh, that, that work there. I mean, I use all your supplements. I, I just said, you know, I want to simplify this. So I, I, I get, I get a vanilla and a chocolate uh, super fuel plus all the, the burn, the, joint, the heart, the testosterone, the immune, I get all of it. Well, the box, this last box came, I was missing a burn. Contacted, sent an email, Craig uh, said, oh, uh, sorry about that. And 
I got I, I got my bottle of burn the next day. So, you know, it's it's those kind of things. Everybody's very responsive, and that Facebook group, uh, it's it's just not like uh, any other. You get a kick in the seat of the pants when you need it. You get support when you need it, and just ideas that um, it's unreal. Uh, some of the creative ways that people have of working through things. And and one other thing that I've learned too, is that the programs that you put out there are really just kind of a template. Everybody's going to respond differently. And some of this, we kind of have to test our own way. Yes. And, you know, we may make modifications uh, to it, but we have help if we are unsure about that. Yeah. So, I mean, beautifully said last few minutes for sure. I want to thank you truly for your kind words and what you said about the program being a template is exactly true. And I think that's something I love so much about your journey is you were able to take these programs as a template and modify them to fit you. And now you're bringing in, you know, the help from the doctor of physical therapy and all this stuff. And you have a program that's really effective for you. It's, and that's, what's going to be sustainable for you. And that makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah, I look forward to the next uh, couple of months and and I'm going to I've got a DEXA scan scheduled or will schedule in in July and we'll see uh where that goes and you know really it's a lot of it's just listening to your body. I mean, I, I kind of yeah. want to uh, at, at some point I'll go back to more complete muscle building. You know, uh, it, you've given us tools to know how to read certain yes. things. You know, if we if we quit making strength gains, then we probably need to change things up uh, yep. with the progressive overload as an example. And and so, you know, as a result, and just like I had to stop uh, old school muscle two in the middle, that just tore me up because I didn't want to quit the program. But because of time constraints, I needed to do that. So I'm going to go back to old school muscle two and start over and finish that at some point. Nice. I love that. You certainly have a road ahead of you and you certainly have all the tools to continue guiding forward. And in closing here, I'd love to give you the floor one more time to, you know, I don't know, say thanks to anyone particular in our team who really helped you out. I know, you know, you mentioned, you know, Ben and Catherine a few times, and I don't think they get quite enough praise as they deserve and, or as well as anyone else in the brotherhood. I'd love for you to share a little bit of that and then we'll wrap up. Well, there's so many, uh, uh, I would be remiss to, try to start naming names yeah. there, there's so many guys out there that have uh really uh, been helpful and and shared uh their ideas and and their story and kind of helps uh give a perspective and so it's i think it's helpful uh for the the new guys to i think it's important for them to post it's uncomfortable you know that first picture mm-hmm. is awful you, you feel bad but that's you just start where you are and uh it's going to get better and i mean you you see on your website all the transformation pictures so you know i mean that that's those kind of things are gonna happen uh if you just stay uh, with it and keep trying to uh, move forward and you know it's um uh, I, I just think that it's important I remember one of your first podcasts, you said, you know, you you can either accept being over the hill or you can take the hill. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, there's there's a uh, Bible verse, Romans 12, 2, that says, do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Well, to, you know, kind of modify that to what we're going through, don't accept the fact that, oh, well, I'm 40 or 50 or 60, so yeah, this I'm going to have a belly, and you just give in to that. If you focus on renewing things in, in, that, in that triangle, body, mind, and spirit, and keep uh, renewing the the way you think and the way that you approach things uh, that way, then that will 
uh, help you achieve the things that uh, God put us here to achieve. Perfectly said. Once again, Dave, thank you for coming on today and sharing your heart and sharing, you know, just this phenomenal story. And I want to say God bless you and your family. I wish you you many years of health and wellness and continued strength. I want to hear about the results of that DEXA scan when you get it. And please give us a note when you finish that OSM phase two and completion (laughs) two. I'm I'm, I'm cheering for you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Anthony. Thanks, David.